That's it. You got your degrees. Now I can finally step down. I've been waiting 16 long years for this moment when you have your degrees and are safely launched into the next stage of your lives. As you were graduating from kindergarten in 1997, the world around you was changing in fundamental ways. Beavis and Butthead was canceled, <laughs> but South Park premiered. Titanic, Jurassic Park, and Men in Black were all released in 1997, as was a new special edition of the original Star Wars trilogy, renumbered episodes four, five, and six, as production was started on the new episode one, The Phantom Menace, laying the foundation for multiple 15-hour and six-minute Star Wars marathons <laughs> in the next decade for all of you. But some things didn't change. The Florida Marlins won the World Series by beating my Cleveland Indians in a travesty of a seventh game <laughs> when premier closer Jose Mesa, remember him, blew the save in the ninth inning, extending Cleveland's futility in professional sports championships, which will reach 50 years next year. Thank you, Jose. In 1997, the first Harry Potter book was published in England. 1997 also saw major advances in technology. Dolly the Sheep, the first successfully cloned mammal, was introduced to the public that year. IBM's Deep Blue, a chess playing program based on research at CMU, just like Watson, won its match against Grandmaster Gary Kasparov. And in a powerful statement about the advance of technology and its ability to touch every corner of our lives, Wheel of Fortune unveiled a new digital puzzle board, replacing the old mechanical one, which had ably served Vanna and the rest of us for 22 years. I figured back in 1997, I had 16 years to get ready for you, the Harry Potter, South Park, tech savvy, Star Wars, men in black generation. I got busy. A lot has changed since 1997 as you made your way through elementary school, middle school, and high school. In fact, almost everything about CMU has changed. Our undergraduate programs allow for much more freedom of movement between majors. The BXA majors just graduated, and the huge increase in second majors and minors are all indicative of this. We've seen major expansions in our programs in the life sciences with new departments, centers, and faculty. Several areas in computing, information systems, and energy research have advanced. And in addition to our traditionally highly ranked programs in the arts, business, public policy, computer science, and social sciences, engineering, and the physical and natural sciences, our humanities programs have been recognized with rankings that put them alongside universities known for their strength in the liberal arts. I think every Carnegie Mellon department and school is stronger today than it was 16 years ago. Of course, there have been extensive physical changes on our campus, though for undergraduate students you'd hardly know it because you think the campus looked exactly this way the moment you were born. Uh, and the expansion also of our global footprint now to 15 campuses and programs in 14 countries. During this same period, Pittsburgh has thrived, hosting the G20 meetings of heads of state during your first semester and being named America's most livable city. A key to our city's resurgence has been the partnership between the University of Pittsburgh and Carnegie Mellon. And I'm pleased to have this opportunity to thank Chancellor Nordenberg for his great leadership at Pitt 
and for initiating and sustaining our partnership. Thank you, Mark. And we are a more diverse and welcoming place than we were 16 years ago. The numbers show this, but equally important is the campus climate and culture. There's more, much more. But to me, what's even more important is what hasn't changed in these 16 years. And that's our core values as a university. Problem solving, hard work, innovation, and collaboration. These are well known to you. You may be sick of hearing about them. But these values have infused your experience here and they will be guideposts and important touchstones for you throughout your lives. The source for some of these distinctive CMU values, in fact, is our founder, Andrew Carnegie. It might seem strange to evoke a 19th century man to respond to 21st century challenges, but Andrew Carnegie knew something about change. He rode the wave of the Industrial Revolution more ably and skillfully than any other human being of his time. Carnegie had strong views about the kinds of values that people needed to thrive in the world he saw around him. And he put in place an approach to education that centered on these values. Despite all the change our university has undergone, perhaps or perhaps because of these changes, these values have endured. I have to tell you, there's an almost life-size portrait of Carnegie in the waiting room on the sixth floor of Warner Hall. Many of you have seen it. For the last 16 years, as I drove to campus every morning, early in the morning, when it was still dark, I would stop at the intersection of Forbes and Moorwood. Warner Hall was entirely dark, except for a spotlight that shines on Carnegie's portrait. Believe it or not, you can see it from the street at Forbes and Moorwood. The first time I looked up and noticed this, I freaked out. I mean, it was like, <laughs> oh my God, that's Carnegie. But actually, over the years, it's become a beacon for me. It also has represented for me the weight of my responsibility. I could almost hear Carnegie saying to me, in a heavy Scottish brogue, of course, don't screw up, laddie. So with Carnegie on my shoulder, so to speak, let me expand a little bit on these values, starting with a commitment to demonstrate practical impact, problem solving. Carnegie believed that if technology was to make human life better, things had to be built, tested, tried, and improved. Applied design, engineering, and the arts were at the core of Carnegie's vision making things with creativity and precision to solve an important problem in the world or to make life better or more beautiful. Today, the things that we make here have become much more diverse, of course, but we share that idealism about building a better world, and not just in theory. A corollary of this interest in realistic problem solving is that we recognize that complex problems unfold within larger contexts or systems. Rich problems have rich and dynamic relationships to other problems. There are many examples of this. Perhaps the most obvious is recognizing the global nature of everything today. Technology, the economy, the environment, even higher education itself. There will be no American or Chinese only solution to climate change. There is no point in creating a communications technology that works on one continent and nowhere else. Because we all want to, indeed, need to be connected. Andrew Carnegie thought globally as well. In fact, I think he'd be thrilled to see how many of you have come to CMU from outside the United States. And he'd be delighted to note how many of this class are majoring in international relations or global studies. We didn't even have these majors before 2009, and today they are among the fastest growing majors that we offer. 
our interest in practical problem solving, value number one, leads directly to another CMU value for which we are famous, and that is hard work. Yeah. There's no magic how to, how to have impact in this world. It just take hour, takes hours of study, thought, and experiment, and then more study, thought, and experiment. I don't know that we really work harder than other people, but my sense is that at CMU, a lot of people don't think of such work as a burden or a chore most of the time. This seems strange if you see work and fun as opposites but you don't have to think of it that way. CMU people are practical idealists. We want to get something done that will make a difference in the world, and bringing that about is just what we'd rather be doing. Spending 150 hours trying to figure out how to shave a fraction of a second off a buggy's race time, that sounds like a good week to us. There are dramats and musicians among you who never stop rehearsing for some performance or another and artists, architects, and designers who invest amazing amounts of time in their projects. For CMU people, just bring on a tough or quirky problem, and we'll have a good time. At the student leadership celebration on Friday, Student Council President Will Weiner put it well when he said, pursuing your passion and doing it well is what characterizes CMU students. The reason we put in the hours is related to the next value, a desire to try something new and to make a difference. In 2006, at this very podium, the university awarded an honorary degree to John Hall, our alumnus who had won the Nobel Prize in Physics in 2005. Hall summed up something he learned here at Carnegie Mellon very well. The Carnegie way is always to be trying something new, he said. We wake up every day at CMU trying to discover in the lab or the studio, in the classroom, or in our imaginations, how to do things better or differently. In this kind of environment, there's no such thing as failure. There are only experiments that don't go as expected, that teach us something and equip us to try again. People in startup companies call this pivoting, changing your business plan to adapt to what happens. Because even the most careful plans will often, in fact usually, be upended by the unpredictable and the unexpected. Go forth and pivot, often. One recent manifestation of this try something new value is an upsurge of interest in entrepreneurship at CMU and Brian and the uh, and his, uh, what's the name of your company again? Pay Tango. Sorry, I was thinking PayPal, which is actually a compliment, I guess. Pay Tango is a great example of what I'm talking about. There's been a dramatic increase in interest in entrepreneurship on this campus during, and during my time as president. Student and faculty interest in this has just soared. And the faculty, notably at the Tupper School's Don Jones Center for Entrepreneurship, in a Project Olympus in the School of Computer Science, they've created imaginative and multifaceted support for these aspirations. The last distinctive CMU value is interconnected with all of the others. And that's a commitment to collaboration with people who know different things than you do. We owe this one largely to the late Herbert Simon, the Nobel Prize winning economist and computer scientist. Simon's broad influence on this campus was founded on a recognition that no single disciplinary perspective can provide a workable solution to the important problems facing the world. You can come up with theoretical engineering ideas that work beautifully on paper, but without factoring in economic and policy constraints or the vagaries of human behavior, you will not see much improvement in actual practice. There are people on this campus who like to work alone and are brilliant at it, and that's fine. But most of us find more satisfaction and success from working in teams. We collaborate often, especially with people who know things and who have skills that we don't have. That's the way it is here, and that's the way it will be 
whatever comes next for you, and you're prepared for that. Collaboration and teamwork require that we develop a certain quality. Let's call it a confident humility. And I thank, Dean, I thank Dean of Student Affairs, Gina Casaleno, for pointing this one out. When you're part of a team, you have to be confident in your own skills and knowledge. I don't mean empty bravado. I mean the recognition that you do have a solid background that is important and relevant to the task at hand. And this is certainly one area where being a CMU graduate serves you exceptionally well. But along with this confidence in your own knowledge and skill, comes the humility from knowing that you don't know everything. You have to be open enough to trust that your partners in collaboration bring value to the job as well. Especially for people who are smart, this can be a hard lesson. But it is a lesson, lesson that you certainly have learned here. Whether it was in the integrated product development courses, where designers, engineers, and marketers work together, or in the entertainment technology centers, teams of artists, actors, and software designers, or another one of the many project courses we have at CMU. You've learned to respect how other people think about the world. These values, these four values, have served this university well, and they will help you no matter what path you follow. When you are motivated to innovate and to solve real problems, and you're humble enough to be open to other perspectives and good at working together, and you have no problem putting in the effort necessary to get the job done, well, anything is possible. These values are the basis for CMU's nimbleness, our ability to move relatively quickly when opportunities arise and to excel in what we're doing. And they were the scaffold on which your education was built. They are admirable qualities which you share with a special group in this world, the 92,000 people who have the right to call themselves alumni of Carnegie Mellon University. The other day, at one of the many farewell events held in our honor, my wife Maureen said something very wise. Another of the countless times she's done this in our 46 years together. She said it wasn't the buildings or the programs or the events that she would miss about Carnegie Mellon. It was the people, the students, the faculty, the staff, and the trustees who are drawn to this place. People who exhibit the very qualities I've been talking about. You, people who are genuine, committed, open, smart and caring, people who live the values of Carnegie Mellon. It has been a privilege, truly it has, to have served as your president, to have been the leader of a place so important and admirable. Well, I just can't say thank you enough for that. And thank you to the class of 2013 for finally graduating so I can now step aside and hand the presidency off to Subra. I have to say you've been a great class, not just my last, the one I've been preparing for all these 16 years, but the best. I don't know if it was the Hogwarts, Hogwarts sensibility or the South Park irony or the Star Wars epic heroism, but you've been fabulous. We're very proud of you. Thank you for all that you've contributed to this university. Thank you in advance for all that you will do for the university in the future. Congratulations.